It looks like the start of an amazing adventure, doesn't it? It has been 15 years since we first saw Link ride through Hyrule in the third dimension, and gaming has never been the same since. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has been a huge influence on me and how I appreciate video games. It could be unfair at times, but I find myself thinking about my experiences in this game when playing other games like, of course, other Legend of Zelda games. This game just seemed to hit all the right notes. Many have called it one of the best games of all time. The world the game paints is so immersive and enthralling and full of colorful characters and creatures. Being in this world is like being in a dream I want to experience for hours on end. The story is the classic adventure of a boy journeying away from his home to save the kingdom from an evil villain. There is a twist of time travel though. Link starts off the adventure at age 10 and is sent inside a giant tree, inside a giant cavern, and then inside a giant fish. Yeah, well that last one gets kind of weird. Then Link is sent forward in time seven years to stop the grand threat of the King of Evil, Ganondorf. The controls are so smooth and easy for beginners to, to grasp quickly. The menu interfaces are very simple to use, and the game is still challenging and engaging enough for seasoned players. For beginners, the learning curve is seamless for the most part, up until you get to the abrupt spike in difficulty in the Water Temple. Due to haphazard puzzle layout, frustrating water level rising mechanics, the lack of weapons usable underwater, and having to be taken out of the game to enter the inventory menu to put on and take off the iron boots again and again and again, the Water Temple has garnered quite a reputation. But after that bump, things get a lot better. You get to use an arsenal of cool weapons that you acquire along your journey. Many are throwbacks to 2D Legend of Zelda games, such as the Boomerang, the Hook, and the Hook Shot, while new ones are introduced, such as the Megaton Hammer and the Bombachu. It is so much fun to use these to solve puzzles and fight enemies. When I recently played the game, I took more notice of the architecture and aesthetics of the world, particularly in the temple dungeons. Aside from the use of color and corresponding elements in the, in the temples, Each temple's architecture is unique and well-designed with its theme, utilizing all the power of the Nintendo 64. For example, the design of the Forest Temple mimicked that of a decrepit Gothic castle. The Fire Temple used visuals such as totem poles and outstanding tile work. The Wire Temple had Chinese design. It was amazing to see the attention to detail back then in the temple designs, from the layout of puzzles to the monsters. It really made every dungeon in the game fun and memorable. What's more incredible is the music. The music in the game, in my opinion, is phenomenal and one of the most memorable in all of gaming. The music even plays an important role in the game's mechanics. Link learns songs as ocarina that must be played to trigger events ranging from unlocking, unlocking passageways to helping Darunia get his groove back. The songs from the Legend of Zelda games, especially Ocarina of Time, have been remade many times by music makers around the world, and some of the results are incredible. Even after all these years, I can still say that this game is one of my favorites. Entering this world is a euphoric experience every time. Perhaps no other game has excited my love of video games as much as Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Thank mm -hmm. you.